Hello, this is Mr. McGovern, and welcome to video three on two-dimensional collisions. And this is solving problems using our momentum vectors. Uh, the last video we looked at um, setting up those momentum vectors. So now I'm going to go through an example. So we'll look at the steps that you follow, and then an example of that. So the steps are: make sure with these momentum problems you can clearly separate out and draw a before diagram and an after diagram. I like to draw one on the left and one on the right. Um, it just helps me to get my mind that I'm in the right place that I'm looking at a separate before and after. Then make sure you add to your diagrams the momentum arrows because people sometimes just leave the velocity arrows there and don't actually update them to think that we're dealing with momentum arrows. So draw your momentum arrows in. Um, put the vectors together in a vector addition diagram if needed. Show that the total momentum before is equal to the total momentum afterwards. That's often a, a sort of a hidden step. Once you've got that, you may have a, a triangle, and if that's the case, then you would need to use either Pythagoras, um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or Sokar Toa to solve that triangle. And then once you've solved that triangle, remember the vectors we're dealing with are momentum, and often they'll ask what's the final speed. So you've got to convert that momentum back to a speed afterwards. So here's a situation similar to before, but I've just got different numbers on it. A red ball strikes a green ball, and they fly off at different angles. My first um, order of business is to make sure I've got a before and afterwards, and this is clearly drawn with a before and an after diagram. Um, cool. The next was to add my momentum arrows. So I've just got down there in the, in the left-hand side, P, momentum, equals mass times velocity. So momentum for the red one before the collision is 0.2 momentum, because it's 0.1 times 2 meters a second. And afterwards, I've got 0.1 momentums going up here, and an unknown amount of momentums going down there. All right, now put these vectors together in a vector addition diagram. So the, on the left-hand side, I've only got the single vector. I don't need to put that anywhere. But my right-hand side, I've moved them away from the diagram so I can redraw them. We add them head to tail. So there's the first one. And from the head of that, I add the tail of the next arrow. Um, those are 90 degrees to each other because of the angles between them. You can see the 60 and the 30 in the main diagram. And that's what I've got. So the total momentum... Um, is from the start to the finish. How did I know it went straight across? I know it went straight across because the total momentum before equals the total momentum afterwards. And before my before diagram, I had 0.2. That's the law of conservation of momentum, is that afterwards I must have 0.2 as well, which is directly to the right. So I kind of had that in my head when I was drawing this vector addition diagram, knowing that that arrow with all the question marks on it had to be quite long um, to make sure that the total went across to the right. Now that I've got that arrow, I could do some calculations. I've got two sides of a triangle, so if I wanted to do it, I use Pythagoras, but I've also got an angle, so I'm going to use Sokar Toa. Uh, with my angle, the point two is the hypotenuse, the question marks are the opposite, so that's sine. So sine 60 is opposite over point two. Rearrange, you get opposite equals point two times sine 60, and that equals 0.173 momentums. Now, if this was a, an NCA question, they're not going to, well, they may ask you, but the chances are very slim that they just ask you what the final momentum is. The chances are they'd say, what's the final speed of the ball? So from that um, 0.73 momentums that I've added in there, we can turn that back into a velocity using the momentum equation. Divide both sides, um, sorry, the mass is 0.1, and then we divide both sides by the 0.1, and we get velocity equals 1.73 meters per second. So just once again, um, I just want to point out that the speed to start with was two, was 2 meters a second. The speeds to end with was 1 meter a second and 1.73 meters per second. You can't just add the speeds up and say, oh, that equals 2.73. That's different than the, the 2 meters I had to start with. The angles matter, the, the, the directions matter, and that's how we can come together and have speeds that look slightly bigger than, or the totals look bigger than what we had to start with, but it all works out because of the vectors.